Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another session of Sun Devil Learning Labs. We're from Arizona State University. I'm your instructor, Michael Barker. And uh, this is for grade five students. And today we want to solve word problems using tape diagrams and fraction by fraction multiplication. That, that's our objective. I've wrote it here. And we'll write it again as I give you a few reminders. Again, so we're going to solve word problems using tape diagrams and fraction by fraction multiplication. I'm going to give you my usual reminders about some things we need to do to get prepared. First, uh, I'd say make sure that you're in a comfortable setting with no distractions. That means no TVs on, no music on, no little brother or sister maybe bothering you, or even an older one. If, if your setting's not really that good, maybe you need to talk to mom or dad or your guardian and just find out if there's a better place for you at least to study. Second, you want to gather any supplies you might need today. I suggest a couple of pencils, a notebook. I hope you're keeping a notebook as we go through this course. And at least if you don't have a notebook, you're probably going to need several sheets of paper. Uh, scissors sometimes are handy, but a ruler is definitely going to be helpful as well. Even if you don't measure out your uh, models, your, your tape models, or your area models, you can still uh, you, they don't have to maybe be precise, but you draw straight lines and it helps you keep things proportional. Thirdly, be sure and use the restroom before we start. And remember, you can always pause the video if you need to take a break or walk away. You're, you're on your own schedule, really. Uh, it, it's nice, too, that you can go back and revisit a part if uh, something wasn't clear or if you, uh, if you struggled maybe on a problem that we try when we first start. We also have this icon up at the top right corner here, just a notepad. Occasionally, if you are keeping a notebook, you'll see this icon and I'll try and remember to notate it for you because it's, it's, a, it's a helpful hint that that's something that we're gonna use often and it's probably a good tool that you're gonna need to remember whatever that notebook is next to. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna start with the review. It's multiplication of fractions. Take a couple of minutes, draw an area model, and solve this. This is just to refresh our memories. Most previous lessons, you should have uh, mastered this pretty well. Take a couple of minutes. It shouldn't take you more than one or two, and uh, then we'll look at it. Okay, moving along. I drew a rectangular area model, and I first broke it into fifths. One, two, three, four, five, we have five, five columns, okay? And we actually have two fifths. Two fifths of our entire area is, is what we're working with. And we wanna know what is one third of that area. So hopefully now you would know that you're just going to have to go this way with a horizontal line and break this, break our area model into thirds horizontally. And then you'll see that where we overlapped, because we only have one third, the two blue shaded boxes, is really our solution, right? We have one, two out of a total of 15 boxes altogether. And when we look at it mathematically, we have one third times two fifths is the same as one times two is two, numerator times numerator, and then denominator times den denominator, 15. So 2 fifteenths, the same as if we counted our area model. But now we wanna move on. Another part of our review, and this is gonna help you some more in upcoming lessons, but it should be refreshing for you, is uh, we wanna multiply whole numbers by decimals. We're gonna look at uh, a simple one, one tenth, plus one-tenth plus one-tenth is equal to three-tenths. So we want to know what is three times what gives us three-tenths. And you should have had a solution that looks something like this. One-tenth plus one-tenth plus one-tenth, we have three of them, but each one, each one unit, one-tenth, is equivalent to the decimal 0 0.1. So we're multiplying three 
times 0 0.1, and it gave us our 3 tenths. Try a few more of these problems, and uh, I'll come back and see how you did with those. Okay, welcome back. And now these you probably wrote in a decimal answer. I guess we should have wrote that first one in a decimal as well. If you did three times 0 0.1, you should have had 0 0.3. And what we'll, we'll be able to notice now, and these, these all should have followed a similar pattern. Seven times 0 0.1, 0 0.7. Nine times 0 0.1, 0 0.9. 7 times 0 0.01. Hopefully you caught on that we're now working with hundredths instead of tenths, 0 0.07. And then if we work with a larger whole number, 20 times 0 0.1, you should have got 2.0. And then 20 times 0 0.01 would be 0 0.2. Again, this was just a little review worksheet that we're going to use to prepare you for future lessons as we move on with uh, converting our fractions to decimals. But now let's look at our first word problem. Joachim is icing 30 cupcakes and he spreads mint icing on one fifth of the cupcakes and chocolate on half of the remaining cupcakes. The rest will get vanilla frosting and we want to know how many will get vanilla frosting. So we can go back to one of our old tools. Let's use a tape diagram to see if that'll help us solve the problem. So when we look at the tape diagram, what's the first thing we notice? We know our whole unit is 30 cupcakes. So we know the width of our whole unit is 30. Somewhere in there, depending on how it gets broke up, where our whole unit represents 30. And what else do we know? We know that one fifth of the cupcakes got mint icing. So we have one fifth got mint. And what did that tell us? That told us that we had to break our, our tape diagram into five parts. One, two, three, four, five equal parts. See, because now that is another known piece of information that we have that one fifth of the total got mint. So our next step is we had 30 units and we wanna divide it into five parts. So that'll tell us how many parts we, how many units we have in each part. 30 units divided into five parts would give us six parts. And if you wanted to check it mathematically, 30 times 1 fifth will give us 30 fifths or a total of six. And now we know that since each unit is six, we can start working on the second part of the problem. It says that uh, uh, half of the remaining cupcakes got chocolate and the rest will get vanilla frosting. So what our best step is to add a tape diagram to our solution here, right? We're gonna use a second tape diagram, but this is where our ruler can come in handy because we wanna make sure that it's exactly the same width as our remaining part. We've already allotted the, the first part for the mint, so we don't wanna count those anymore. But if we make our tape diagram the same size as what was left, our second diagram, we now know that half of those should be chocolate. And our question is, we don't know what, how many are vanilla do we? But we do know that our half is gonna be 12 because we know six and six is 12. And that means this half must also be 12. Six and six would be the same here. 12 and 12, again, the same tape diagram, 12 are chocolate, and if 12 are chocolate, that means 12 cupcakes are gonna get vanilla frosting as well. We can also look at that mathematically, right? We're gonna look at it numerically, and we're not gonna use the tape diagram. 
he's icing 30 cupcakes and he spreads mint icing on one fifth of the cupcakes. Okay, so we know if he sp spread it on one fifth, our whole must be five fifths, which tells us we have four fifths remaining. Our remaining unit is four fifths. Now the question is, if half of the remaining cupcakes got chocolate frosting, we want to know what is half of four fifths. Again, when we multiply one half of four fifths, we get one, one times four will be four, and two times five will be 10, that's four tenths. If we simplify, it becomes two fifths. We know the two fifths of the cupcakes are gonna get vanilla frosting. And then we know, since we know two fifths of the cupcakes get frosting, and we know that the total amount of cupcakes we have is 30, we can just multiply two fifths times 30 units. So two times 30 would equal 60 and five times one would be five. Again, remember, I can't remind you enough, we when we're multiplying fractions, numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator, 60 fifths is gonna wind up giving us a total of 12 whole units. So 12 cupcakes get vanilla frosting. He's, now what about if we change the amount of cupcakes with min icing to two fifths? Think about this a second and I'll be right back with you. So as we look at it now, two fifths is the only difference in our problem. We're changing the amount of cupcakes with min icing to two fifths. So hopefully you should be able to recognize that our whole amount is still 30 and each fifth that we broke it into is still six. None of those numbers have changed for us. But now we're looking at what is half of just one, two, three fifths, right? Because we have, we're using these two fifths to be mint. So we have one half and one half. It's a little harder to tell with our tape diagram, but if we looked at that, we could guess six and about half of this would be three. That would be nine, that's one way to tell. And then another way, six and one half of that, it'd be three, nine again. But if we want to do it mathematically and be certain, we know that one half of this unit, which is 18, our tape diagram is now 18 parts long. One half of 18 units is 18 over two, which when we simplify it becomes nine. So two fifths of the cupcake had mint icing then nine had vanilla and nine had chocolate. Again, I would expect that you can make this transition fairly easily, especially if this is the second part of the first problem. If we wanted to look at it just mathematically, we know one half times three fifths is equivalent to three tenths. And three tenths of 30. Yeah, now see we get into some larger numbers, 90, over 10 still simplifies the nine. Nine cupcakes get vanilla icing if two fifths get mint. And that would be the answer to our word problem written in a sentence. So let's look at our next problem. Mylan's gonna put one fourth of her lawn mowing money in savings and uses half of the remaining money to pay back her sister. If she has $15 left, how much money did she start with? So even though this time we do not know our whole unit, we can still use a tape diagram to solve. So let's set up our tape diagram. Take a minute and see if you can think about how you would label the parts since we don't know our whole. Okay, let's assess what we do know. We know that Mylan puts one fourth of her lawn mower money in savings. And we'll, my, that tells us that our tape model is gonna have to be broken up into 
four parts, one, two, three, four, and we can label the first one fourth as savings. That's all stuff that we know from the word problem. What else do we know? Well, we know that half of the remaining money is uh, went to her sister, and then she also had $15 left. So if we can take the remainder of the tape model that we haven't used yet, Again, using our ruler, extending down, making sure it's the same size. And what are we gonna do? We wanna know that the half of the remaining money. So here is the, the remaining money, the whole model. We're gonna break it in half, one half, one half. And what else did they tell us? She gave half of that to her sister. And then she also had $15 left. So hopefully we can tell from that 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 means that her sister must have also got $15 because one half would equal one half, right? So the total value of our second tape is 15 plus 15 is equivalent to $30, 30 units. So the second tape is three parts of the first tape. So that same 30 is now going to be applied to the first tape. We can just transfer our 30 units up here. And each part of the first strip then, if we're gonna break three, these three into equal parts, we know each one would be 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. And the one here where we still had the savings, we know 10 is in savings. Each part of the first strip obviously is $10. And so four times 10 is gonna be $40. And then we can safely say that Mylan started with $40. Okay, let's see now, it'll be time for you to try a few of your own. These will all take you probably a little longer than some of our other problems have done. So take as much time as you need, but if it, I would say if it took you four minutes to do each problem, you're gonna be looking at something like 16 minutes. Uh, it may not take you quite that long, but uh, Take your time, and then when we come back, I will go over all the problems. I'll read them to make sure everything is clear. I think when you do the problem, you may want to highlight certain things you know or what the question is. It may help you determine if you're going to work with a tape diagram where you know the whole unit, and some you may, and some you may have to find the whole unit. Each question will be a little bit different. Problem one, the Booster Club sells 240 cheeseburgers, one-fourth head pickles, one half of the remaining burgers had onions, and the rest had tomato. How many cheeseburgers had tomato? The hint here should be that we're looking for part because we know the whole. Problem two, Mr. B made 60 cookies for a bake sale. He sold two thirds of them and gave three fourths of the remaining cookies to the students helping with the sale. How many cookies did he have left? So again, we're looking for a part, we know our whole. These are just a couple of little hints that should help you get started. Problem three. Now Dan's sorting his rock collection. Two thirds of the rocks are blue and three fourths of the remainder are red. So if three of the leftover rocks are green, how many rocks did Dan have total? This will be a little bit of a different problem because we're looking for how many rocks he had. We don't know the whole of it in this one. You'll set up your tape diagram a little bit differently. Finally, practice problem four. Patty is wearing several rubber bracelets. One third are tie dye, one sixth are blue, and the remainder are camouflage. If Patty wears two camouflage bracelets, how many bracelets does she have on altogether? So, like I said, take your time. When you're ready, come back and we'll go over the solutions. I'll go through them one at a time, and if we need to, uh, if you need to stop and rework anything, you can always just pause the video. So when you're ready, just come back and we'll check them all. You can do them one at a time, they're in order, or you can uh, do all four and then come back and check. Okay, welcome back again. And uh, it's time to go over our solution for practice problem one. I worked it out on my whiteboard and uh, we'll go over it. 
I'll read it again. The Booster Club sells 240 cheeseburgers. I highlighted that. We know that's our hold. So I, I put it down there. One fourth had pickles. That's some important knowledge. One half of the remaining burgers had onions and the rest had tomato. How many cheeseburgers had tomato? Okay, so what did we know? We, we drew, draw our tape model and we know our total, 240 cheeseburgers. So we knew one fourth had pickles. We can draw our area here. And now we, we know that we, our tape model needs to be broken into four equal parts. And if we break it into four equal parts, that also tells us that 240 divided by four would be 60 equal parts. Each one of our parts now has 60 cheeseburgers. And we know that 60 cheeseburgers had pickles. But our question is, out of the remaining cheeseburgers, how many had tomatoes? We know half had onions. So what's one of the first things we need to do is we know that 60 plus 60 plus 60 is equivalent to 180. That's the amount we're dealing with, right? And again, I tried to draw my tape model, my second one, in relation to the first one so that it made sense. So if, if we have 180 cheeseburgers left, looking for onions and tomatoes, and half got onions and half got tomatoes, we break this model in half, 180 divided by two, you should have got a total of 90. And so then we have 90 head onions, and that really right now is our answer. You have 90 that have got tomatoes, but let's look at it mathematically as well. What, it, what happened here? We had how much out of our original model, after we did the pickles, we had one, two, three fourths of the unit left, right? And we wanted to know what one half of those three fourths was equivalent to. So one half of three fourths is the same as one times three is three, denominator two times four is eight. So three eighths of the total amount of cheeseburgers we now know had tomatoes. So we can multiply three eighths of 240 and that would give us a very large number, 720 uh, divided by eight times one is eight gives us 90. 90 cheeseburgers had tomato. So that was a second way to get it. Now you could have simplified your fractions as well. When you multiplied three eighths times 240, what do we know? We know eight will go into 240 30 times. Then we know three times 30 is 90 and one times one is one, there's our 90 again. So we know the solution is all the same and that 90 cheeseburgers had tomato on them. I hope you can see that simplifying the fractions before we start kind of takes away the need to probably use a calculator and work with some of these larger numbers. Let's work, move to our, our next uh, solution. This problem, Mr. B made 60 cookies. We know that, we know that's gonna be our whole. And he made them for a bake sale. He sold two thirds of them, that's gonna be important. And he gave three fourths of the remaining cookies to the students helping with the sale. Our final question was how many cookies did he have left? Okay, what do we know? We know he had 60 cookies. Your tape model should look something like this. Your whole is 60. And we know that he sold two thirds of them. Well, we have one third and one third, that's two thirds that were sold. It left us with one third of the total amount remaining. Now that remaining amount was broken into fourths, right? Because he gave away three fourths of the remaining cookies. So we have to break this into one, two, three, four equal parts. So what else do we know? Well, we know that if one third of 60, 60 divided by three is 20. So 20 cookies were one third, 20 cookies were one third, and 20 cookies were one third. 
Again, our tape model should line up. Uh, so that tells us that the total for the lower tape model, the remaining part has 20 as a whole amount of units. So if we have 20, 20 units, and we have one, two, three, four, 20 divided by four will give us five. Each, each unit of one fourth should be equivalent to five. Or you could have just looked at it as a fraction, 20 divided by four, it's gonna give you five. So how many did he have left? He had five cookies left if you write it in the sentence. Now again, we can look at it another way. We know that we're taking one fourth of one third. And one fourth, the missing amount of one third is going to be one fourth of one third is equal to one twelfth. Now we know that one twelfth of the total amount would give us the same solution as well. So 60 twelfths is equal to the same as five units. So there's a couple of ways you can do it mathematically, and a lot of times you may just want to simplify, but hopefully your, your tape diagram while you're practicing with this looks something like this, and I think that's gonna, you're going to find it most beneficial until you start working with larger units. Okay, let's look at a different problem. This one here is asking us a different question. We wanted to know how many rocks did Dan have left or have all together. It doesn't say left. It says how many rocks did Dan have? So let's see, what do we know? You know we know two thirds of the rocks are blue and we know three fourths of the remainder are red. So hopefully your tape diagram would look like this. We usually use a, one piece of tape for our, our entire unit. This time we don't know what, what our total is yet. That's what our goal is to find. But we do know that two thirds, we'll break our tape diagram into thirds and the two thirds are blue. And that tells us that we have one third left. Okay. And then out of that one third, three fourths are red. So we have th three fourths of there, those are red. We'll break that remainder into fourths, four even units, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. So we have that. And we know we also have, we still have what do we have here now? We have three green rocks left. That's the only information we have, but it's enough. Because if one fourth is three, each one of these is 12, right? So three times three plus three plus three plus three, or three times four is 12. We now know that the total is 12. We know that one third is equivalent to 12. And how many thirds do we have? Three. Three groups of 12 tells us 36. So we know Dan has 36 total rocks in his collection. Okay, finally, this should be your last solution. And it's Patty's wearing several rubber bracelets. One third are tie dye, one sixth are blue and the remainder are camouflage. If Patty wears two camouflage bracelets, how many bracelets does she have on? Okay, again, we wanna know how many bracelets she's wearing all together. That's our whole, we don't know that. So let's start working with what we do know. Let's, it says one third are tie dyed. So let's first break our box into thirds, one third, one third, and we'll mark the first third for the tie dyed unit. Okay, and then it says that one sixth are blue. Okay, so now we know, or we should know, that one sixth is half of one third. So all we have to do is break our boxes, our one third boxes, into one sixth sections, correct? So now we have six parts, one third there, which is one sixth plus one sixth. Here's our one sixth that's blue. We mark that. And now we have the rest of the, the I'm sorry, the rest of the, the bracelets that we're not sure about yet, except that we know that they're gonna be all camouflage. 
And we know that she's wear, if she's wearing two camouflage bracelets, it wants to ask us how many bracelets does she have on? Well, what it means is that this one sixth part is equivalent to two camouflage bracelets. And so if each, each unit is two, that tells us we have six total parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. And each part is equivalent to two. We know that because of what we've, we found out from the, the earlier part. And then, so we know that six times two is a total of 12. And you should have had a solution that says, Patty was wearing 12 bracelets. And then finally, I'd like to say thank you and goodbye. You've been uh, wonderful for this lesson. And hopefully, hopefully you'll join us for our next few lessons next week. And we're just going to continue working on fraction multiplication and start converting our issues into uh, working with decimals as well. Again, I'll remind you if you need any more work on multiplication of fractions or converting to decimals, keep reviewing previous videos or visit Khan Academy. There's a plenty of resources out there in the learning guide as well. But otherwise, hopefully this is Friday lesson, so hopefully you have a nice weekend and we'll see you next time.